Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from the Ingenious Engineer. Today I will be showing you how to use a capacitive moisture sensor to find the soil moisture of a potted plant. Capacitive moisture sensors are very useful because they can accurately and reliably measure the moisture level of soil to determine if a plant has too little, enough, or too much water in the soil. Here is a circuit diagram illustrating how capacitive moisture sensors work. They use an inbuilt capacitor and measure the time it takes for the capacitor to charge and discharge. First, a pulse is sent through the circuit and the capacitor is charged. Then it is discharged and an embedded chip on the sensor, known as a 555 chip, records the time it took for the pulse to charge and discharge the capacitor. When in contact with water, the capacitance of the capacitor changes, therefore changing the time it takes for it to charge and discharge. Using this information, we can figure out the moisture level. Here is the circuit diagram to connect the capacitive moisture sensor to an Arduino. The ground pin is connected to the Arduino's ground, the VCC pin goes to the Arduino's 5 volt pin, and the analog out pin is connected to A0 on the Arduino. Here is the code to get raw data readings from the capacitive moisture sensor. First, we're going to start by declaring two constant integers. I will explain what those will be used for later. Then, in the void setup, we start the serial monitor. Then we move on to the void loop, where we read from the Arduino's pin 0 and print that to the serial monitor. Then we delay for 100 milliseconds or a tenth of a second. By running this code, the sensor will output raw numbers that may not make sense at first, but I will show you how to convert the raw data into a moisture percentage. To do that, we must first determine what number the sensor outputs when dry and when wet. To get the dry readings, simply run the code when the sensor is completely dry. I have now connected my Arduino and the capacitive moisture sensor and uploaded the code. When I open the serial monitor, you can see that the sensor is outputting a value of around 615 when completely dry. Now I will go into the code and set the constant integer dry to 615. Now, in order to get a reading when the sensor is completely wet, I'm going to use a glass of water and put the capacitive sensor in the water. Make sure not to submerge any of the electronic components on the top end of the sensor, because that will potentially cause it to get damaged. Now, I have the sensor placed in a glass of water, and as you can see, the lowest number I'm getting is around 272. So now, I'm going to set the constant integer wet to 272. Now, we know that when dry, the sensor will output 615, and when wet, it will output 272. Keep in mind that all sensors are different, so the constant integer dry and wet will probably be different on your sensor than it is on mine. So make sure to run this code when you use your sensor. To convert the raw data into a percentage, we can use a function that is inbuilt in the Arduino software, known as the map function. Here is its basic structure. The map function is used to translate a number from one range to another. The value would be the number you are translating. From low is the lowest number on the current range, and from high is the highest number on the current range. Too low is the lowest number on the target range, and too high is the highest number on the target range. If the value we got was, for example, 5, from low was 0, from high was 10, too low was 0, and too high was 100, the resulting value would be 50. Here is the updated code that uses the map function. I made some modifications in order to incorporate the map function. The integer raw data stores the value we get from the moisture sensor, which, as we determined earlier, is anywhere from 615 to 272, with 615 being fully dry and 200 being fully wet. 
Next, we move on to our map function. The result of the function is being stored in a float called percent. The value of the map function is raw data, since that is what we're getting from the moisture sensor. The from low and from high values are dry and wet, since that is the range of our current raw value. 0 and 100 are the two low and two high values, respectively. This means that if we were to get a value of 272 from the sensor, the output of the map function should be 100%. And if we get a value of 615 from the sensor, the function output should be 0%. In other words, if the sensor is completely wet, it should output 100%, and if completely dry, it should output 0%. After the map function, we print the variable percent to the serial monitor and delay for 100 milliseconds. I have now uploaded this code to my Arduino. And as you can see, the sensor is completely dry. And on the serial monitor, the output is 0%, just as expected. Now, when I place the sensor in a glass of water, you can see the value quickly increase to 100%, since the sensor is wet. If I take it out of the water again, you can see that the value is now around 7 to 8 percent. This is because there are still some drops of water on the sensor and the sensor is still detecting them. And it isn't completely dry like before. This means that the code works and the sensor is able to detect the amount of moisture. Now that we know the code works, we can try to measure the soil moisture of this bamboo plant. When I put the soil moisture sensor in the soil of the plant, you can see the moisture reading is around 16%. This means that the soil is pretty dry for this plant. According to the internet, the moisture of a bamboo plant should be moderately wet, which I'll interpret as around 50%. I have now watered the soil, and as you can see, the reading is around 55%, which I think is pretty good for this plant. Now you know how to use a capacitive moisture sensor to measure the soil moisture of a potted plant. If you liked this video and learned something new, please leave a like, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. That will help me make more interesting videos like this one. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.